Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today I'm gonna cut a hole in my tailgate and add some storage. A couple of years ago, I made a big storage unit that fit in the back of my Land Cruiser so I could hold tools and supplies and whatever else I needed. I didn't end up using it very much and I took it out when we moved, but I still need to have some storage in the back of this thing. So when I was looking around on some of the forums, I found where people will take off the cover on the back of their tailgate and put storage in there. So we're gonna do that. So the first thing we're gonna do is pop out this panel, which is just held in by some plastic little rivets. Now we gotta figure out what we can cut out. So it's mostly empty in here. There's not much in there at all. There's a few things here for the latch, but uh, I think we can cut away this top section and then just work around those pieces. So there's a lot of depth over here, like in the corners, and that would be good, but the stuff goes all the way across the top, so the whole top section is not gonna be that usable. After looking around at this a little bit more, I kind of changed my plan. The original idea was to cut out as much of this as possible and have one big cavity and then one big door, but uh, I think I've changed that. You don't want to cut out everything because part of the strength of the tailgate is these ridges that are in the surface. And there's also some stuff on the inside, some structural members, so we don't want to get rid of those. I'm still going to cover the whole thing with one big surface, but I think I'm only going to cut out these areas on the end. They're deep enough that I could put in a tool or a bunch of straps or whatever I need to. Uh, and still keep the structural integrity of the tailgate. I drew out the shape that I wanted to cut away on one side and then measured out some key points to translate that same shape to the other side of the tailgate. Once I had them both drawn out, I got out the angle grinder. I found it was best to really lightly go over my sharpie lines and make a score, not try to make a deep cut. The cut ends up being cleaner, although it takes more passes and a little bit longer to do. I also made sure to go right up to the corners, but try not to go through them just to have a cleaner corner look. And this tool works great for cutting in straight lines or even big sweeping curves, but the curves in the corner just wouldn't look good if I tried to do it with an angle grinder. For the corners, the angle grinder is not really going to work very well, so I'm going to use a jigsaw. And if you don't have an angle grinder, you could do the whole thing with a normal jigsaw blade that's made for multi-material. Now, it's not going to be as clean of a cut, but it would definitely work. This video is sponsored by Energizer, and I wanted to show you their new Vision HD Plus Focus Headlamp. This is one of the things I keep in the console of my car, along with some matches and paracord. Just in case there's an emergency, I've got the basic stuff I need. These things are really handy in case you need to work under a car, change a tire at night, or if you want to work in a dark place like an attic. It's great to have some hands-free lighting while you work. This has five different lighting modes that you can flip through, and it's got a button to help you focus the beam so you can go from a tight spot all the way to a full floodlight. These are really handy to have around. They're comfortable and durable. If you want to find out more about these, click the link down in the description. Thanks, Energizer. All right, so this already shows me that I have enough space to be able to put some tools in there and put a cover over them. That's pretty awesome. All right, I got the panels cut out, and I think that's as much as I'm going to cut out on here. I don't want to mess with the inside here. So the next step is to clean up these cuts. They're really rough, so we're going to have to get some files, some uh, flap disks, clean them up, and then probably go back and prevent rust by painting the inside of this. I don't know if we're gonna paint the whole thing yet, I'm not sure, but we gotta clean up before we can do anything else. I don't know a whole lot about using files, but I do have a couple of old flat ones that seem to work pretty well. I made sure to file on the inside and on the outside of each one of these cuts, and after a little bit of work, it ended up being pretty smooth and pretty easy to touch. The big worry here was that I would have a sharp edge that would cut my hand if I was trying to get something in or out of these compartments. I've got the edge of this pretty clean and I'm gonna stop working on it for today, but I don't want the exposed edges to rust. So I'm gonna spray some rust inhibitor just on that exposed metal edge, just to kind of preserve it. You could also just put a coat of spray paint that would do it temporarily. You'll just have to clean it off later.
To make the cover for the tailgate, I ordered this sheet of foam PVC. This is often used for signs, so it's kind of flexible, it's pretty durable, should work out pretty well. I got this from Tap Plastics, and you can give them specific measurements, they'll cut it to size and send it to you. So I got it a little bit oversized, we're going to take it out there and trace the shape so I can knock off the corners and make it fit perfectly. I tried a couple of different things to get the radius around the corners and it ended up that a paint can was pretty close. So I pushed that all the way to the corners and traced it and then cut out that area with the jigsaw. This stuff cuts super easy. You could probably just do it with a utility knife and get a pretty good result. After I got these corners knocked off, I smoothed out the transitions with a sander. And to turn this piece into a door, I used a piano hinge, also known as a continuous hinge. This one was four feet long, which was a little bit longer than I needed. I laid it in place, marked the length that I wanted, and then cut that off with a Dremel. I got this hinge centered on the bottom of the door and used some clamps to hold it in place. Then I drilled some holes through the top side and added some small rivets. You could use screws here, but I was kind of afraid that they would get stripped out of this plastic because it's so soft. The rivets actually worked really well to hold the hinge in place. Back in the vehicle, I took my time to make sure that this was in the right place and it was running parallel to the cuts that I had made. And after I was happy with the placement, again I clamped it down and drilled some holes. The rivets worked great here as well in the sheet metal. Now it's time to put in some latches so that you can keep this thing locked in place. I got these marine latches and they have a little hook here and when you pull that up, it pulls the hook back. So this should work. The only problem here is that the gap that it's expecting for the material is bigger than the material that I used for this. So we're gonna have to fill that in. We also have this little piece that needs to hook down there somewhere for this thing to catch on. So we gotta figure out the placement. I used a chalk marker to make a mark where I wanted the catch to be then press the door down onto that and it transferred up onto the bottom of the door. I did this on both sides and then scored that to make sure I knew where that placement was. After that I did some experiments and some measuring to try to figure out the scraps that I needed to put in place to make sure that everything would line up correctly. After getting my measurements figured out, I used that score line as a reference point to draw the center of the hole. At that center point, I drilled a small pilot hole, and then from that, I drilled a larger hole. I used a Forstner bit for this because it needed to be 2 and 1 8 inches. I went ahead and drilled from the top side just in case there was any tear out, I wanted to hide it. And while I was getting these holes prepared, Josh designed a couple of small rings and cut them out on the laser cutter to act as spacers. These fit right underneath to make up the difference in thickness that this latch was expecting. But they're just spacers, so you could totally cut these out of any material and use any scroll saw or jigsaw to make them. This material is thinner than what the latch is expecting, so we had to put in some spacers. We also have to put in a spacer underneath the catch. And since this is inside, and we can only tell if it works, if it's closed, this is kind of hard to do. So I'm going to cut down some scraps and use some CA glue to test it out. That's good. As we're out here working in the hot, I can tell that this PVC board is actually flexing a little bit when it sits in the hot sun. So this may not be the optimal material to use for this, but even if it doesn't work here, I can always knock this piece out and use it as a template on something else. You could certainly use a piece of wood. I just wanted to use plastic because I thought it would be more resilient. But if it ends up messing up, I'll just rip this one off and replace it with something harder. I experimented with some different spacers, mostly using the same material that I was using for the door. I drilled the matching holes and drilled holes down into the sheet metal where everything would connect. I tried several different variations of this and planned on using rivets, and then I realized that the rivets weren't long enough to go through all of the spacers that I needed. I ended up getting some longer bolts and running those through and adding nuts to the bottom side of it. This worked pretty well, but the spacers I was using weren't quite right still. I found that a quarter 20 nut ended up being the perfect size spacer.
It latched perfectly in place and held the door all the way against the tailgate. Once I had one of these figured out, the second side was super fast and super easy to do. One thing I still need to do is go back and add some Loctite to these. The vibration of the vehicle bouncing around is probably going to make these come loose. Now I'm just going to throw some random stuff in here, open and close it a few times to make sure that the door stays in place while it's moving. I use some degreaser to clean off all the surfaces both on the top and down on the inside of these before adding some foam. I wanted to cut down on the noise of any metal straps or tools bouncing around in here, so I cut some EVA foam floor mats to put in. I cut them as big as I possibly could and forced them into place and then peeled up each corner and added spray adhesive. I cut these pieces well oversized and went back and trimmed out anything that was in the way. I did have to cut out a lot of stuff at the top to make sure that the latch could freely move so that the tailgate could lock into place. The white paint was still in pretty good shape so I decided not to paint the inside of the tailgate and I used some acetone to remove those extra sharpie marks from before. And after that was done, this thing was finished. So it turns out that this project was actually a lot easier than I expected. The big scary part was cutting into the vehicle, which of course is terrifying. But in this case, it's not a structural thing on the car. It's something that could be re-welded if I absolutely had to. And even that's a scary thing, it's pretty cool to take something that you enjoy and customize it to make it your own. Like I pointed out before, if this material ends up warping or not being something that lasts a long time, I can pull it off and use it as a template to cut a thicker piece of material to put in here. And if that material is a different thickness, I can just add more spacers here to make up the difference. So I'm curious about something from you guys. Do you have a project like this that you're worried about starting because it may end up being a disaster? Are you scared about taking that first step? Let me know down in the comments because I would love to hear about those things. Luckily for me, jumping in and cutting a hole in my vehicle worked out pretty well. I'd love to know what you think about this project and if you've done something like this and you have some more suggestions or other ideas, let me know down in the comments. I've got lots of other types of projects that you may be interested in. Check out some of those videos and don't forget to subscribe. That's it for this one guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Because this material is thinner than what this bracket, this latch, because <laughs> we have to put a spacer underneath, underneath, we have to put a spacer underneath, under, underneath, 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 underneath the park.